the faithfuls. Good morning, Sister Yolanda. <clears throat> the word of the Lord says, starting in verse 8, Formerly, when you did not know God, you were slave to, slaves to those who by nature are not gods. But now that you know God, or rather you are known by God, how is it that you are turning back to weak and miserable ways and forces? Let's think about that. How is it that now that we know God, we are going back to weak and miserable ways, forces, and devices. How is that possible? Galatians chapter 4, starting in about verse 8. The word goes on to say, Do you wish to be enslaved by those things all over again? Good morning, prophetess, Pastor Spencer. Do you want to be enslaved by those things again? Because if you go back, you could be enslaved by those things again. He said you're observing seasons and times and years. I fear for you. Paul said, have I wasted my efforts on you by teaching you the truth? Come like, become like me and I'll become like you. And, and it's not that we don't do wrong. As you know, it is because of these things that's going on in Paul's life that Paul said he was unable to get to them. But this is where I want us to, to drop our, our hat right here. Just rest your hat, rest your wig, rest your glasses. Just, just rest right here. This is what we're going to talk about. I'm not going back to weak and miserable ways that have benefited me nothing. They have benefited me nothing. Galatians says, how is it that you know the truth? You know the truth. You know what the word of the Lord says. You know what this relationship is that you have in Jesus Christ and what God has done for you. But yet, we keep sneaking and creeping, being pulled back into weak and miserable ways by forces that we seem to have no control over. Oh yeah, Prophet, elder, minister, sister, Dr. Tuesday, me too, me too. We all are weak and susceptible to the things that know us. Good morning, Q. We are all, good morning, Pastor Kim. We are all susceptible to them. Weak and miserable ways, Galatians calls them. We ain't going back. We ain't going back. Listen. There is too much going on in the world. And, and if, you, if you pay attention to the times, you understand a little bit about the end times. Listen, I'm not saying it's coming tomorrow, but it's nearer than it was when my grandmama was here. Come on, somebody. Nothing is waiting on you. So what is it that you need to let go of? What is it? that you need to let go of. I heard the Holy Spirit say to me as I was preparing this, and he dropped this in my spirit. He said, until January 1st, we are going to meet here. And I'm thinking 830. I like to kind of be strategic. And we will be back next week at 5 a.m. for fourth watch prayer. But God said, we are going to start putting aside, laying aside, maybe watch night so the 31st that morning we will meet every day to between now and then so friday saturday and that will be sunday i believe so just before church it'll be a quick word putting them aside letting it go what do you have hold of what do you have hold of that you need to let go of i ministered a sermon last sunday to god be the glory at uh the house of god where i serve and worship uh the streams church and um, the story, I talked about the story that was told about the man who fell over the cliff. Good morning, my dear sister Terry. That fell over the cliff and was holding on to that limb. And holding on to that limb, a passerby came and the passerby said, I'm here to help. How can I help you? What do you need? He said, help me to get up from the side of this cliff. I'm holding on by a limb. I'm holding on, as some would say, by a thread. I'm holding on. And it's breaking. <laughs> It's breaking. 
the weight of what I have going on in my life, the weight that is on my shoulders, my children, my spouse, my job, my finances, where I'm going to live, what I'm going to do, how I'm going to handle these tax situations, what's going on in Washington, all of these things. I'm holding on by a great thread. And the man that's on the cliff, who's on steady ground, says, give me your hand. And the man who's holding on to the branch says, what? Let go. You, well, let, let go of this thing that I'm holding on to that's breaking anyway, that has already failed me, that can't help me. You want me to let go of this? Yeah, let go of that and take my hand so that I can help you up. But the man who's holding on by the limb asks the man who's on steady ground, who's on a flat surface, who can help him up. Now, first, before you do it, what's your name? What's my name? I'm here to help you. Does my name matter? If I if you need fifty dollars and I got forty, why are you tripping? I'm giving you forty. We'll figure out where the other ten is coming from. If I have the answer for what you need, why are you asking me fifty million questions? Now listen, I'm not saying follow someone blindly. I'm not saying being foolish in your decisions and who helps you, because we know that everybody who comes to help ain't coming to help. Because everybody that's with you. Ain't for you. Good God Almighty, that's a tweetable. But you must get to a place that you are willing to let go. To let go and to grab the hand of he that can help you. To let go and grab the hands of those who can help you. Yeah, and there's some people you're going to have to let go of. I know it hurts. Can I tell y'all a story? Several years ago, several years ago, uh, the Lord showed me that I was fearful of success. I was fearful of success. He told me, you're fearful of success. You're not fearful of failure. You're fearful of succeeding. Isn't that crazy? Why are you fearful of succeeding? Lord, why am I fearful of succeeding? Tuesday, you are fearful of succeeding because you know that with success comes leaving some stuff, leaving some people. And you don't want to do that. You don't, yeah, yeah, I know. I'm bold as a lion when it comes to the things of God. I ain't scared. I ain't scared of the devil. I ain't scared of you. If you come against me, I got a word. It, I ain't even got to battle you. I don't battle the devil. And I don't battle his imps. And I don't battle his spirits. I just put the word on it and I worship. That should help somebody right there. Y'all fighting the wrong thing. We don't fight with flesh, flesh and blood. I can love on you and know that you don't like me. God has taken me there because Je God, Jesus knew how to have uh, Je uh, Jesus knew how to let his enemy sit at his table. Everybody can't let Judas kiss him. You, you ain't anointed for that. You ain't ready. So if you know you got haters in your camp, you might want to let them go because you ain't ready for them to roll with you. And you know, they sabotaging you and they hating on you. They ain't never got an encouraging word. They ain't never telling you to go forth and do nothing. It's one thing for a friend to be like, sis, have you thought that through? Bro, you really thought about that? Let what you think about this, what you think? But listen, if they ain't there trying to encourage you, Hercules, Hercules, good God almighty. If they're not there trying to be your Elizabeth, if they're not there trying to be your Jonathan to encourage you, to tell you that uh, the Bible says that you will hear a voice behind you telling you which way to go. Now, we know that that's the Holy Spirit, but a friend will warn you. A friend will tell you, sis, shut your mouth when you're talking to your husband. Listen to how you talk to him. A brother that loves you will say, man, you need to watch how you talk to your wife because the word says how you talk to her, how you treat her will hinder your prayers. Do you see your son watching how you talk to and treat your wife? Do you see your daughters? See, we, when you love, when somebody loves you and they're your friend, they're going to tell you. But the ones that ain't in your camp, cut them loose. And just because you ain't going to lunch every day, dinner every day, meeting for coffee once a month, it don't mean that they're not your friend. Do you know they're praying for you? Do you know that they, yeah, y'all might hit some bumps in the road. But but do they speak well of you? When something's going on in your life, are they picking up the phone saying, sis, how you doing, bro? What's going on? But. God showed me that I was fearful of success. I had to symbolically lay down a rope and step over it. And when I stepped over it, I'm telling you, about 20, I don't remember, about 2014, somewhere in there, I went full on. I, I think 
maybe it was 2013. I think I was just getting ready to receive my doctorate. I already had the masters, already had traveled the country, traveled the world, blase, skippy, dollar do, all of that had been ordained, but was still scared of success because I didn't know what that meant. Who was I going to have to leave? Let me tell you something. Some stuff ain't none of your business to worry about. Let it go. Let them go. Well, if I let him go, if I let her go, man, she's a good woman, but she got this, she got that. Da, da, da. And I listen, I ain't talking about that material foolishness. I ain't talking about that. She got that, so do you. She got some daddy issues, so do you. <laughs> good daughter, mate. I'm talking about some character stuff. She flying off the handle all the time. She cursing folk out. It's it, it, short of her being in the middle of menopause or once a month in the middle of her cycle. Y'all might want to sit down and talk about that. She just needy. She wearing you down. Good God almighty. You want to be Hercules. You want to be Superman. You're tired. Good God. Talk to her. And if she ain't willing to work on it, deuces, boo. Deuces. In this season, you must be purposeful in your relationships, purposeful relationships, whether it's friendships, associations, business, uh, uh, romance, cut him loose. He cussing, blasting you out because you overcooked the boiled egg. Good God. Let him go. Change your hair like this. You need to lose weight. You need to gain weight. I like you with lipstick. I don't like you with lipstick. Why you got to wear makeup? Stay natural. Press it out. Ah, Jesus. Listen, you got to make decisions before you move into 2018. You must let some stuff go and you must not go back. Listen, your past cannot tell you anything different. Your past cannot tell you anything different. Who? Who are you going back to? The Bible says, what are you going back to? Verse 8 says, how is it that when you know God, when, when you do not know God, you are a slave by nature to everything that wasn't God. You were a slave to weed. You were a slave to crack. You were a slave to sex. You were a slave to pornography. When you didn't know God, you were a slave to these things. You were a slave to lying. You were a slave to stealing. You were a slave to cheating. You were a slave to, to that man, to that woman. You were a slave to money. You were a slave to your job when you didn't know God. But verse 8 says, it goes on, verse 9 says, but now that you know him, now that you know God, or rather you are known by God, which is more important to you, that you know God or that God knows you? Which is more important to you, that you know God or that God knows you? Listen, I'm thankful, I'm thankful that I know God. I know him in the pardon of my sins and the fellowship of suffering. I really, really do. I didn't even used to say that part of the scripture. But, but what, what is more important to me is that God knows me. God knows me. Don't be a slave to that job, man of God. Don't be a slave to that job, woman of God. Don't be a slave to that career aspiration. Don't be a slave to the pursuit of money. Don't be a slave to that. Don't be a slave to the material things. God wants us to have all that, but it's to advance his kingdom. It's to help other people. Save, invest, first tithe, bring your offering, save and invest, be a blessing to other people. I'm telling you, I am at a place that I am saying, Lord, my desire to be a philanthropist is so that I can bless the girl in the line behind me. Not only bless her to get her groceries, but how's your rent? Who, who, how many, what kids need to go to college? You, you, you behind because you sick on your mortgage. You just lost your job. Let me take care of that. God, anoint my hands for wealth. Anoint my mind for wealth. I know I am called to be wealthy. I know he has established me to be wealthy. However, I need the anointing for wealth. For it is he who gives us the power to gain wealth, to establish his word and his kingdom. It ain't about us. What are you a slave to that you need to let go of? You chasing money, you want money, but it's coming through your hands. It's running like water. You got holes in your pocket. Maybe because you're not giving nothing to the church. 
Maybe because you're not tithing. Maybe because you're not bring, giving an offering. Maybe because you're not blessing someone who God has told you to bless. It's not about you blessing your pastor or, or his wife, first lady, whatever she's called. It's not about uh, buying their prayers or their coverings. It's because they do pray. God Almighty, it's because they do cover you. That's why you bless them. That's why you give to them. You give to the house of God. Let go of that love for money. The Bible says that money is useful for all things, but God don't want us to love it. He don't want us to love it. Good God Almighty, so that if it's gone, if you lose it, I mean, don't nobody want to walk through the mall and lose $100. You don't even want to drop and lose five, right? Particularly if your, your, your account a little raggedy, <laughs> a little short. But you got, you got to let go of these things coming into 2018. There is so much that God has for you that is going to be a new beginning of a new thing that God is going to birth in your life. He's going to birth it. Some of you are in... The push position right now. Some say pray until something happens. I say push until something happens. I say praise God until something happens. I say live out your prophecy until something happens. Whatever that P stands for for you, you need to get in position because your labor pains are real. You feel uncomfortable. You feel tight. God hasn't uh, blessed me to to bring forth a child. He hasn't blessed me uh, for that. And so I love on my nieces and my nephews and my godchildren and the, those that I work with in, in the school systems and the juvenile center. So that's how God has allowed me to bring forth my love for children and to understand spiritually labor pains. You are in labor pains. You are holding on to a vision. I'm about to help somebody. You are holding on to a vision. Thank you, Holy Spirit. And God has told you to push that vision out. He's told you to push that book out. He's told you to invest in yourself. He has told you to go to that training. He has told you to go to that school. He's told you to get that other degree. Pam Bradley. Lord, if you are not on here and somebody know her, tell her I just called her name out. She is supposed to go do what God has told her to do. The Holy Spirit just dropped that in my spirit and this is the year. Yannicka, I don't know you. Is that Yannicka or Yanka? Jet? I don't know you, but when your name popped up in right here in this timeline of this message, the Holy Spirit said to tell you, um, I don't know what Johannesburg means to you, but I heard Johannesburg. I know that's in Africa. I don't know if that's someone's name, but God said to say that to you, Johannesburg. So uh, Pamela Bradley, go and do what God told you to do. And part of that is, is getting a de another degree or getting a degree. And Yannicka, Johannesburg. Yeah. So we love God today. We love God. Let go. Let go and don't go back. The word goes on to say, do you wish to be enslaved again, all over again by these weak and miserable ways? By your weak and miserable way, step on over the world. Step on over. Put, go, throw it out. Lay it out symbolically. Lay something down, a broom, a scarf. Good God Almighty, a brush, I don't care what you lay down, and step over it. Do not be fearful of your success. There is a um, sister, um, uh, Pastor Spencer, Pastor Spencer, there is a call that you are going to get. There's a call that you've been waiting on, actually, the Lord says. There's a call that you have been waiting on, and you are going to get that call for 2018. And I know you just, I think you just went to Africa or something like that. But um, this is a different country. This is a different country. Jamaica, have you wanted to go to the islands to minister? Uh, and, and just be prayed up because it's, it's the witchcraft over there. Okay, amen. So, but you know how to handle yourself. But God said the call is coming. Yeah, amen, amen. So it's coming, it's coming. Glory to God, we celebrate God. We are not going to be fearful of our success. We're not going to be fearful. Listen, who's going to go with me? Who's going to go with me? We're not going to be fearful about that. Who's going to go with me? Oh, my God. I don't have an armor bearer. I don't have an assistant. Oh, you can't be fearful. It's some stuff you're going to have to do on your own in this season. Because some people are going to be too scared. And you trying to move on, you didn't crossed over. 
You didn't cross over. Good God Almighty. You don't have time to be waiting on these people. You didn't cross over into, listen, some people move by levels and some people move by dimensions. That's a tweetable. Some people move by levels and other people move by dimensions. Sister Spencer, God is calling you to move, Pastor, into dimensions, not, not just levels. Okay, some people, I posted this the other day, as my spiritual father said, about uh, uh, the process requires you to take the steps, not the elevator. But I will add to this, the Holy Spirit is making this very clear right now. Sometimes, some people have to take the stairs. One, two, three, you got to go through a different kind of process. But there are other people that can take leaps, you can jump a couple of stairs. You can take two or three stairs to get to the next level. Some people do take elevators, but there are other people who move by dimensions. Dimensions. There's some steps because of your faithfulness back here, beloved, because of your faithfulness to let go, because of your faithfulness to trust God, because of your faithfulness to be obedient, even when it hurts, for your faithfulness to shut your mouth when you wanted to say something, for your faithfulness to speak when God told you to speak, your obedience to God. God is going to move some of you into dimensional places. You're going to skip some steps, not, not, not immaturely, not immaturely, because we're not doing no, we're not doing no miscarriages. We're not doing no spiritual abortions. We're not doing none of that, none of that. When you jump into the next dimension, when you move into the next dimension, I posted this last week, God's bringing it all back. See, my parachute is open. I've already jumped. I didn't pull the string. Good God Almighty. I'm saying, God, take me, bring me into those spaces and places where divine connections can happen that can take me to the next level that you have for me. Now, on the way, keep my hands clean and my heart pure. Oh, the devil is real. He going to tempt you. The minute you start moving in dimensions, boo, he going to tempt you and test you at a whole nother level. This kitty stuff down here. This ain't nothing. Matter of fact, you didn't conquer these weak and miserable ways. And we declare that you are not going back according to Galatians chapter 4, verses 8 through 10. You're not going back to those weak and miserable ways. Say it with me. I am not going back. I will not go back to weak and miserable ways. I will not be enslaved to things that kept me entrapped. I will not. I will not go back to weak and miserable ways. Weak and miserable people draining you draining you leeches draining you well what you think should i do that i don't know why are you doing that you sure you're supposed to be doing that did god tell you to do that hallelujah glory to god bless your name good hey brother jonathan i love you i love you so much so we 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 are not going back we are not going back. If you listen, let me help you with something. If you ain't going to be encouraging me in this season, and I'm not telling nobody to get on nobody's uh, ship, boat that's sinking. You know what they're doing. They shouldn't be doing. But if you get ready to be, you know, a negative David or Anna or whatever your name might be, peace to deuces for real. I just can't do it in this season. Life is short. Time is short. I will not go back. You need to say that. Get in your mind. What is it? The Bible says he will not have you to be entangled in the sins that so easily, in, in the, the temptations and the sins that so easily entangle you and beset you. They, they beset you. They come in front of you all the time. And we, and we cannot sometimes be, sometimes we're victorious over it and sometimes we're not. Listen, God counts the times that you are not weak to it. He really does. He counts that time that you are not weak to giving in to something. But flee from the thing that so, so easily entangles you. Run, huh, for your life. Run for your life. Yes, yes. Let go. Let God turn that's repentance change your mind about it and don't go back i know he said he's sorry i know he said he's sorry mm -hmm. i know she said she's not gonna do it again i know i heard him 
I hear you. But, but Sister Tuesday, Minister Tate, said he was sorry and it's been three months and he hasn't done it again. Okay. Wait till you do something else he don't like. Or something's recalled to make him remember what you did the last time or something you did causes him to reflect on something that somebody else did and now his fist is balled up again. Maybe uh, the intimacy ain't the same as it used to be so he feel like he need to, you know, tip out. Maybe her, how you uh, grab her or hold her brings back a, a memory of something that somebody else then did. You, you stay out a little too long getting the milk and the bread. And now she going ballistic. Listen, let me help you with something. If there are people in your life that are not willing to get the help that they need to be healed and whole, you can't be their Holy Spirit. And you can't be their Jesus. And you can't be their doctor, their psychiatrist, their therapist, their psychologist, their psychiatrist, and, and prescribe them a medication. The only medication you can subscribe prescribe to them is the Holy Spirit, the Word, and prayer. Maybe some fasting. I'm here to help. I want, you gotta let go. You gotta let go. You gotta let go and not go back. Galatians chapter 4. Galatians chapter 4. Starting in verse 8 through 10. Trust God for this season of your life. What is it that you need to let go of? What is it that you are afraid to do? I'm going to challenge you. We're going to meet again tomorrow, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday morning before church. Because going into watch night service, you're going to have let this stuff go. Do you hear me? What do you need to let go? Do you need to let go? Listen, this might sound crazy. But do you need to let go of a dream? Just for, just for this moment. Just let, let the dream go. I know you want to be married, sister. So do I. Good God Almighty. But what about letting it go? And just trusting God in this season. What about letting it go and stop looking at the wedding books. And I love Say Yes to the Dress. But maybe you need to be purged from something that you, you are, are, are almost obsessed about. That this has to happen. I'm not saying don't believe that God is going to heal you. Don't, don't, I'm not saying don't believe that you will be married brother or sister. I'm not saying that. I'm not saying don't believe that you won't be debt free. I'm not saying that. I'm not saying don't believe that a supernatural debt, collect, debt, debt cancellation is coming your way. I'm not saying that. I'm saying let go of it. Let go of it. Cast that care upon the Lord because he cares for you. Take up his yoke because his yoke is light. Let me help you. His yoke is... Oh, no man, nothing but love. Put that on. Don't, don't, don't keep festering and pondering about how can I become debt free? And so you're chasing money and you're chasing ideas just to make a little bit more. I believe, y'all know I believe in multiple streams of income because that's biblical. But cast your care upon him because he cares for you. Take up his, his yoke because his yoke is light. His burdens are few. Listen, matter of fact, the Bible says uh, his word is burdensome. There's no burden to his word. There's no labor to it. You want to be healed? Give it to him. Let it go. Let it go. And, 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 and take up his yoke. Take up the yoke that, that I am healed. By your stripes, I'm healed. Do you understand what I'm saying? Follow what I'm saying. You want to be married? Give it, give it to him. Let that go. Let that go. God, I trust you with my life. I trust you with this area. I trust you. I'm trying to live right. I am living right. I'm waiting right. But God, I give it to you. He who finds a wife finds a good thing. Then man, you say, shoot, I find favor. I got favor because my wife is coming. Do you understand what I'm saying? Give it back to him. Let it go. Let it go. And don't go back to it. Take up the yoke of God. The bad things, let go, don't go back. The good things, let go and put God on it. The good things, let it go and put God on it. The things that ain't right, that's not good for you, let it go and don't go back. Do not go, the Bible says, Galatians chapter 4, to weak and miserable ways that have benefited you nothing. When you didn't know God, you didn't know no better. <laughs> When you didn't know God, you didn't know better. You didn't know no better. But now that you know God, and more importantly, God, God knows you. Ha! More importantly, you know God, but God knows you. Because greater is he that is within you than anything that is in this world. If you abide in him and his word abides, is, abides in you, you can ask for anything. If your soul does not condemn you, you can ask God for anything. 
anything. Ask, seek, and not let go of that side of the cliff, holding on to that branch. I heard my pastor give another illustration of that story this morning. He said, and and that man who was hanging on the side of that of that of that rock had frozen. In my story, he had fallen. Good God Almighty. In my story, the prophet, I didn't let him fall. The pastor didn't let him freeze. I mean, you know, the heart of a shepherd, right? But in my story, that when he didn't take the hand of the man who was there to help him, he fell. The branch broke and he fell to his death. And as he went down, the man hanging over, looking over says, if you only would have grabbed my hand, I could have helped you. He said, and by the way, since you asked what my name is, my name is God. God is waiting to help you. He will help you to let go. He will help you to not go back. Because your past cannot tell you anything different. Learn from it. Take the wisdom of it. Apply it. And that's what you get from your past. But in my pastor's story, the person that walks by, and these people, they see him and they look over the cliff, and they see this man hanging from the, from the branch on the side of the mountain. And they see that man, had he just let go, had he just let go when they told him to let go, he would have seen that he was only a few feet from the ground. Sometimes it's our perspective. It's our perspective. We, we have the wrong perspective about doing life and doing life in Jesus. We get scared about stuff that we shouldn't be afraid of because he said the perfect love of God will cast fear out. You don't have to be afraid to let go. You don't have to be afraid of fear. You don't have to be fearful of failure, and nor do you have to be fearful of success. God's got you, beloved. He has you. Now, we're going to get ready. We're going to go on, on in. We're going to go on, on in to 20. 18. We're going to get ready. We're going to get ready. I want you tomorrow when we meet again at 830. This is what I need you to do. I need you to have written down everything that you need to let go of. Get you a little journal. I got a couple of them here. Got a couple of cute journals here. So I have one that says um, we walk by faith. And I have one that says today I'm thankful of. So this is how I'm pursuing 2018. This is what we're doing. I have so many journals. I've told friends, listen, you you are you are responsible for burning all my journals because there's stuff in there. Ain't nobody need to know. Amen. But we moving in. So tomorrow morning, tomorrow morning at 830, we're going to meet here again. We're going to meet again on Saturday at 830. We're going to meet again on Sunday. Good morning, uh, Brother Humphrey, Pastor Bishop. We're going to do that. And we're going to meet again on Sunday morning. If you're already at church, that's okay. But you before you go into watch night, before you go into watch night, you are going to have let some stuff go so you can praise God for real. You're going to let it go symbolically. You're going to let it go spiritually. You might even be able to let it go naturally. It's some people you probably need to call right now and say, boo, we can't do this no more. I can't, I can't, you can't come over to my house at two o'clock in the morning no more. Girl, don't be showing up at his house with your coat and your stilettos on. No, 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 no. You're going to stop that. You, you're not even going to let him in. No, no, no. You can't come over anymore because I'm living, I'm doing this thing for real. I'm going full on out to get to what God has for me because I got to let you go to do that. And let, if you don't get right, you're not going to take this journey of righteousness and holiness with me, then I'm going to miss you. I'm going to love you. Man, my body probably going to ache for you. Let's just tell the truth. Because once you didn't, you know, dipped and dabbled, it's hard to go back to waiting. But God's a keeper. He'll keep you. He'll grace you to be kept. So I will see you tomorrow. I will see you tomorrow. It was my goal to do this in 40 minutes. I think I did it in a little over that, maybe 45. So we will see each other tomorrow. Amen. We will see each other tomorrow at 830 right here. Same place. Get your list. Get your list. We're going to speak through that list. We're going to pray through that list. We're going to declare through that list. Be ready to post some of the things that you are get letting go of. And, and I guarantee you, everything you're letting go of, God has a word for it. That you can take up his yoke and put it on there because you let that yoke go. God bless you. Thank you for joining me today. I love you with the love of the Lord. See you tomorrow at 830. We're letting things go and we're not going back. God bless.